Okay, so my name is Jonas. I'm the lead engineer on this uh, new synthesizer we're building called OPZ. Uh, this machine is a full-blown synthesizer somewhere in between the OP1 and the pocket operators. It carries a lot of the sound engines and effects uh, from the OP1, but sequence, uh, package run sequencer, uh, much like the, um, the pocket operators. So it has 16 dedicated tracks uh, for like drums, and uh, instruments and effects and also controlling your external yeah, stuff, some of which are, I will show you in a minute. So, uh, it has a bunch of tracks running right now. Um, there's drums, there's a bass, like a lead, uh, stuff going on. It's uh, a 16 step sequencer, but it's quite advanced in that it, you can add components to each step of it uh, and get a real depth. Um, the kind of the step components tell the sequencer how to behave when it hits that step, so it can add randomness and it can re trigger, um, jump back and forth in the sequence. And that's like individual per step, per track. So the track will start offsetting and you're your song will start permutating and it gets weird in a fun way. Um, I'll show you one thing in particular. It's a, um, it's a tape looper that records um, some, some or all of the instrumental tracks. You can choose which. Uh, then you can go in and loop parts of that. So, oh wow, that's awesome. Yeah, but I can add like delay to that. I can add filters to it, so it looks. It's a really nice and easy way to just. I love the visuals, the visual representation of all of the, the you know effects and the way to trigger them are just done so wonderful. Yeah, thank you. I mean, that's somewhere where we put a lot of effort, both in the design of the product and this. We want it to be like uh, playful in the. But it's like really aesthetically compelling. Yeah, um, I love how small this thing is. I mean, your last model was already small and compact. Yeah. And that yeah, this time we wanted to like make it truly portable, so this actually, you know, fits in your pocket. Uh, so you can carry it and make hit songs wherever you go, basically. Yeah. And um, is this is this battery operated? It's battery operated. Okay. Uh, uh, it should last like at least 12 hours uh, yeah. before you need to charge it again. So and is it charge? You charge it through the USB. Charge it through USB. Okay. Yes. Um, it has uh, audio out, 3.5, microphone in, speaker here, pitch band, accelerometer in the in the machine. So you That's can do awesome. fun stuff with that. Uh, and what is the uh, mic in? Uh, what are the options that it gives you for the mic? Like since it's not done yet, we had to do, we haven't fully explored it yet. Okay. Um, we're gonna get crazy with it. We just haven't quite just yet. Okay. Uh, Are you thinking about looking in the line of like vocoder? And that oh yeah, definitely. Okay. But I wanted to like explain a little bit about the setup here. Okay. It's connected to an iPad. It's running through USB, but we also have it uh, with Bluetooth low energy, so uh, you can run without cables if you want that. Uh, and on the screen is running the OPZ app. Like I show you a little bit of the interface, but it has a lot of other features as well. So one of them is um, like a um, visualizer kind of thing. So this is 3D graphics running. It's actually all built in a game engine. So the whole app is a game, a game here, <laughs> you could say. Um, so with this, it has a dedicated track to control all of this. So the knobs control like the visual elements. Um, do like this, and you see like this is a guy dancing. Oh wow! And this, you, like the notes in in this case, control like effects to to what it does, and uh, you can like freeze frame him or get, make him go faster. So, so it's almost like a dancing simulator kind of thing. It's quite fun to use, and if you hit record. This will, all your inputs will be recorded. That is amazing. So, so everything's just like totally synced. And so does this come with a set of uh, visuals like this? To yeah, it does. 
a small step, but we're also releasing a toolkit for it, so you can build your own stuff and get on here. Um, so that's where I think the, like, the big value is that you can do yeah. your custom stuff. And since we're using a game engine called Unity, which a lot of people know how to use, uh, there's really already a big uh, community around that. It's very satisfying to see visuals be synced really nicely with the music. I'll show you just one more quick thing. Similar to this, uh, you can grab photos from the camera roll as well. So this is maybe the quickest way to get your own custom visuals in there. So th these were just like loaded from the from the camera roll. Uh, we have a bunch of hands like here, and then I can um, sequence these, like add effects to them. Oh wow! So yeah, with this you can like create your own music videos in less than 30 seconds, you Oh know? my god. You know, I'm thinking this is also amazing for live. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like definitely. incredible for live. Yeah. So could you, uh, say, do a show, take photos of your fans or people in the audience, and then have that kind of like, do sort of like live glitching? Yeah, that's a good idea. That, could definitely do that. It's really, really cool. So cool. I love that it's really simple too, but just very powerful. Yeah. And we can also control actually lights through DMX. Um, so I don't have that connected right now, but I'll show you like the interface for it. So you can control up to 16 lights. Just connect this to a DMX controller and then to your light rig. And you can trigger like effects. Oh wow, oh my God. Now, okay, here's the ultimate question. Could you do all of these visuals that you just showed me all at the same time? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Light plus the gamey, game, gamified visuals plus the images. Well, uh, yeah, you could. I mean, if you want to do the images and the, um, the 3D graphics, yeah. you're going to need two of these, but okay. you can only do like one of those. But it can do lights, visuals, and music at the same time. So there's an entire live show in just one little machine. So if I had multiple units of these, say I had three of them, and I had one for each of these functions, do they all sync up? Is there a way for them to be... Oh, like yeah. MIDI sync or...? Yeah, you could either sync through USB, like do MIDI sync, or you could do uh, MIDI sync through these connections. This is MIDI uh, and CV in and out. So you could go that way. We're actually looking to syncing multiple units wirelessly as well with uh, Bluetooth. How awesome. Yeah. I wish I could dance yeah. like him. <laughs> It's quite fun, right? You know? Oh my god, yeah, no, this is very addictive. I could totally see myself just, you know, like if I was to do this with a live show, I think I might get too, like, engrossed into the visuals and I might forget about the music. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> like, I can imagine, like, creating a loop on something and then you're just like, oh, I've been at this for about 20 minutes and I've just yeah. kind of forgotten. Where that's, I when was. You get, that's when you get another band member to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> play something while you're fucking around with this. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. That is awesome. So cool. So this is out in September. Yeah, this that's year. a plan. It's an estimated release. Uh, okay. Don't like, uh, we don't want to set it in stone, but that's what we're aiming for. Okay, do you have a price point yet? Same thing there. We don't want to like, Okay. Uh, it's going to be cheaper than the open one for sure. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I don't want to give any numbers at this point. Okay. Well, thank you so much. That was amazing. It's a crazy machine, to be yeah, honest. Like, we've gone amazing. crazy with this one. <laughs> it's so cool. I just love, I mean, wow, that is so light. What's the total weight on this? Oh, the weight? I, I have no clue. That's amazing. I love it. I want one. <laughs> Hi, I'm Magnus from Sunny Charge. I'm here at the NAMM show with Teenage Engineering, showing a collaboration, the PO32. So it's this one, it's a drum machine, uh, a synthetic drum machine, drum synth. You have these uh, 16 sounds built in, uh, and just like the other pocket operators, you can make your beats uh, directly on it. Uh,
It also has some nice effects that you can add to your beats. Stuff like that. One really cool feature though is that if you're not satisfied with the 16 built in sounds, you can use uh, this software over here. It's called Microtonic. It's, uh, it's a plugin or standalone. And uh, you can actually make new drum sounds here with these knobs and transfer them over to the pocket operator. I'm going to show you that. Okay, so I'm going to make uh, a sound here. Let's uh, uh, tweak it, some kind of bass drum. That's nice, like that. And uh, now I'm gonna transfer this over to the pocket operator. And I do it like this. Enter receive mode here. I go into transfer. And here we go. So. And there you have it. Now the kick is there. That's how you do it. And you can transfer entire patterns as well. Entire beats from this one over to this one. So let's uh, see what we got here. Okay, so the beat sounds like this. Okay, I have that beat. Uh, same procedure. Receive. You can do it with the cable as well. You don't have to do it speaker to microphone. But I'm going to do one more try with the speaker to microphone. And now you have it. Now it's in here. And you can take your beat on the go. Yeah. On the train. Can I have a go at your beat? Sorry. Can I have a play with yeah, your sure. beat? Yeah, sure. Is, the, is there anything different in functionality as a, compared to the ones before it, or is it like the same kind of effect? It's it, it's very very similar. Okay. Um, yeah, I would say it's very similar to the PO12. If you're familiar with that one, you know. I have the arcade. Okay. But I don't have the other. Okay, arcade is a bit more uh, advanced, and it has all these features for making melodies and chords and stuff. So this is like a drum machine. So it's a, it's a bit simpler in, in, in the in the design. Um, yeah, but sure. Have a go. You, you know how it works. Um, it's just incredible how big the sound is. The sound design is incredible. It was a lot of work because. Um, in this computer, it's a lot more CPU power than what we got in here. And to have that same audio engine that I have there run in this one, that yeah. was a headache. That is something that I'm most fascinated by. Yeah. Like, how long did it take you to achieve that? Yeah. To put that into such a small package? It took me like half a year. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and it is limited to four, uh, four voices, four simultaneous voices. This one has eight. And also, just like the other pocket operators, this one is monophonic, okay. monophonic output. So that's, that's the difference. Otherwise, the, the, the quality is uh, the same. The anti-alias oscillators and the analog filters and all that from, from the software is replicated in here. So that's, that's why it sounds so good, because you know, this has been proven to work. This is a quite popular plugin. Yeah. I've had it for 30 years, and it's still a strong. It's one of our best sellers. I'd really like uh, to try it out. Yeah, you should. What are these buttons down here? That's the, that's the pattern editor. Uh, you can press this one and you see the pattern like that. Oh, so yeah. here, here is uh, you only see one channel. In this case, it's uh, I don't know what sound that is. Um, well, if you, that sound, uh, yeah, fills. Oh wow, like that. that's awesome! I haven't seen a sequencer work like that before. So those three. 
smaller buttons are all the different fills that you can put in. Yeah, like different, um, uh, the accent. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, so, and all of these, uh, all of these features are, are available in this one as well. Have a go. So the knobs here, this one is pitch, it's always pitch, and this one does different things. So different drum sounds, um, they change in different ways with this knob, and you can program that in Microtonic as well. Is this slider up here? Is that knob? So you, you can make actually you can make one sound over here. Let's do it. Let's make a. Because I'm not a drummer, right. I have like a special like love for the sound design behind like really good sounding percussion and yeah, drums. Yeah. And that is like it's so satisfying to get like a really good bassy kick. So this is the AAC sound. So okay, you can have like one sound over here. Oh, that's almost the same. Um, yeah, the sync pulse. So it's an analog sync because it doesn't have MIDI. Uh, but yeah, for sure you can. I've, I've uh, hooked it up to Ableton Live and, and uh, slaved this to, to Ableton Live. You just have to have a, a pulse. Can actually be any kind of sound, and you have that uh, play uh, on uh, eighth notes, and then you can sync it. And you can sync these. Of course, you can just have a cable from this one to to your PO20, okay. and have that sync with this. This is a master, and that is slave. Um, yeah. And then you can have like. Uh, you know how it, um, these are monophonic only, so you can run the sync signal on uh, on the left channel and the audio signal on the right channel. Oh, okay, that's really cool. So you, you can play, you can have the audio going from tonic through your PO20 yeah. and mix it into the PO20 that's really and cool. have them play in sync as well. You go here, they have different sync modes. So okay. you, and you have to, I mean, even, even I have to look it up every time, right. which is what. Uh, so yeah, I, I think this is, let me lower the volume. Okay, do you hear that click? Yeah. Tuck, 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 tuck. That's, that's the sync signal coming in, in the right channel. Okay. And the, the music is coming in the, sorry, the sync is coming in the left channel, the music in the right channel. Uh, and then you, on, on this one, you go into uh, another sync mode that says sync receive, and you just have the cable in between, and they will play in sync. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. That's, I'm, okay. I'm impressed that that only took me six months, actually. To put that well, this one took me much longer. <laughs> yeah, how long yeah. did it take you to actually develop Microtonic? Since I'm, we're up in uh, version 3.2 now, uh, and I've been working on it on and off for 13 years so and um, you know the first version yeah came out late 2003 I think I spent a year developing that but then you can add a number of years on top okay. of that uh, that's really cool and I and this works across all the different recording softwares all the different yeah. Yeah. I'm going to look it up. I, like I said, I'm like a huge fan of sound design and uh, really well crafted like beat sounds and the bass and those are my favorite frequencies. So um, thank you so much. That was really really awesome. Thank you. Thank you.